you know how much of that I added. Okay, so in this equation, I have NH4 as part of my buffer, and I'm adding <laughs> the cesium hydroxide. Why do I choose the NH4 to react with the cesium hydroxide instead of NH3? Yeah, it's an acid. So if I'm adding a base, I need to look at my buffer for the acid part, and those two will react. If I added an acid, then I'd add the base part of the buffer. So what do I do with cesium? Yeah, I just forget about it. It's a spectator ion. So this will go to NH3 plus H2O. Okay. So now, I knew initially from a previous part of the problem, uh, which I just wrote down for you, it's 0.59 for this, and 0.55 for that one. And I don't know how much of this I'm adding, and that's the problem. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's not actually an ice table. It's going to be a more a stoichiometry table. Uh, because... Um, I'm still adding the buffer to the base. The ice table is when I have water here. Do buffers have ice tables? Yeah, uh, but we usually use Henderson Hasselbach and bypass the ice table. Yeah, but if you wanted to, you could do it with the ice table. Okay, so I'm going to subtract x from both sides because I'm assuming x is the smallest value of 0.59. If it was bigger than 0.59, you'd exceed the buffer capacity. And add it here. Brace a little bit of this. So 0 0.59 minus x, <coughs> 0, 0 0.55 plus x. Okay, now I've got that. Now I'm going to put that into my uh, Henderson Hasselbach. There's another piece of information I'll need to add in in a second, but you'll see. I'll get there in just a moment. Okay. Okay, the other piece of information that I have is that uh, when I'm adding this, to get to the pOH of 4.74, the thing is I'm going to a special point that's going to help me solve this problem. Yeah, I'm coming to the midpoint. And how do I know that? Uh, because, yeah, the pKa is going to equal the pH. The pKa, and this should be from the table here. Let's see, of ammonia. I have the pKa is 9.26 and the pKb is 4.74. So I know from seeing the problem, oh, I've arrived at the midpoint. Is it normal for the pKb and the pOH to be the same? At the midpoint, yes. Yeah. So it better be the same at the midpoint. Okay, so that's the only way you can really finish solving the problem from this point. So, uh, what happens is, at the midpoint, uh, B and A are related in what way? They're equal to each other. At the midpoint, because if pH equals pKa, this has to be zero. And so this at quantity has to be the 1, because the log of 1 is 0. So B and A have to be equal to each other. So how I ended up solving that is saying, oh, wait a minute, these two numbers have to be equal. So you just set them equal to each other. Mm -hmm. You set them equal to each other and solve for x. Do you want me to explain that again? And then I can write out the answer. It's intense. It's intense. Yeah. This one's backwards. This is, uh, you know how much you hated the buffer lab you're doing this week? Yeah. That's why you're doing it. This, this is your method of solving, essentially. 
Oh, you're solving for this. That's so Thank good. you. Yeah. So you have to solve backwards, that's why. Okay. So I said, say, oh, I'll put something like you have in your lab. Particular year. So anyways, these two have to be equal because you're at the midpoint because the pH equals the pKa, or you could say the pOH equals the pKb. These two have to be equal. And in that case, you just solve for x. x is going to end up being 0 0.02 moles. If you are somewhat like really a math savant, you're like, what can I subtract from this and add to this to get the same number? You go, oh, what if I, you know, 0 0.57 is the average of the two? So that's another way you could have done it if you're kind of like a math savant. Yeah. So you don't have to use the pH that you, the pOH that you calculated in the part B at all. Uh. No, not. I guess I didn't need it. Yeah. 